in there. Got a few cards in the mail. This one's from Sister Stephanie in Ohio. And uh, she's a woman that always requests prayer. And so uh, as a church, always remember in your prayers. And uh, she says, uh, she says, praying for y'all. Celebrating the conception of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessings to my family at Hillview Baptist Church. Amen. Then this one's from Amanda Brown in Louisiana. She sends us money pretty loyally. And she says, thank you. Thank you for all that you do for the body of Christ. Merry Christmas, Amanda Brown and family. And then this one I just got from a guy in California. And he wrote me a book. No, oh, my. Yeah. And, uh, I, I tell you, it, was, it blessed my heart. And it had me in tears as I was reading it yesterday because it fit. I was studying Second Timothy as I was reading, as I got this and started reading it, and it just it just put everything in perspective. Everything in perspective. Uh, Paul said that he endured all things for the elect's sake. This is yeah. why we do what we do right here. Mm -hmm. We ain't doing it for man's glory. Amen. Right. Paul said, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ under the praise and glory of God. Amen. Yeah. And this man writes and he says, Pastor Paul, I spoke to your wife on the phone recently, so that was a good first impression. Amen. <laughs> he yeah. says, I spoke to your wife on the phone recently and just wanted to write you a quick note of appreciation to you. I'm a 61-year-old retired police officer here in Orange County about 10 miles from Disneyland. Most of the churches around here are many Disneyland in their doctrine. For 40 years I wandered in the spiritual wilderness, reading my Bible without 2 Timothy 2.15, and wondering why I had doubts and fears in my Christian life. One year ago I prayed that God would give me wisdom to understand the truth in His Word. He has answered as only He can and led me to dispensational right and vision. Amen. It has radically changed my life, and this past year has been the best of my 61 years. Amen. He continues to progressively reveal deeper truth to me as I study anywhere from three to five hours a day. About one and a half months ago, I was led to your YouTube channel. Your teaching is the high ground in my learning thus far. I'm viewing one of the sermon videos per day. The one hour always turns into double that time as your teaching is deep and spiritually satisfying. Glad I have a pause button. God's word, I love this right here. God's word is infinite and eternal and overwhelming to my temporal frame. Amen, amen, yeah, amen. amen. People want a church that's going to water it down and play paint by numbers with it. Mm -hmm. Paul wrote to Timothy over there in 2 Timothy, and he says, Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. Amen. Paul acknowledged that what he was writing to Timothy might not be understood by Timothy. But he says, Okay, son, you just consider it. Yeah. That means to have a careful examination of what is said. Right. Mm -hmm. people, people don't want a church where they're going to expand. Listen, 80% of this book is strong meat. Sure. Even the milk. You get over in 1 Corinthians, yeah. first three chapters, Paul said, what I'm feeding you is milk. Yeah. I mean, if that's milk, you can imagine what the strong meat is. Yeah, but but he, he says, uh, he said, it is consuming, and I want to thank you for leading me into the depths of the word. I remember a Spurgeon quote, something to the effect of how we sail about on the surface over the fathomless depths of of meaning in God's word. The, the word of God is like an ocean of great depths and all we ever do is sail yeah. upon the surface of yeah. it. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. He said, he said, then he says, uh, uh, but your teaching goes deeper and I thank you for your effort and, and being God's vessel for his word. His word is priority to me and now your teaching is my standard. And then he, he sent us some money and, uh, Sent me a check and said, use it to go out and have dinner with your wife on me. Amen. Wow. That's <laughs> nice. <yeah. laughs> then he says, if you get a chance, could you send me a copy of the timeline you were teaching from? Your brother, or your, your teaching is a rarity in the world today, brother. Keep it up. Your brother in Christ, Rob Bartels. Hmm. That's what it's about, man. Amen. That's a, that's a member of the body of Christ there being edified by the word of God. 
And uh, I, I know, I know, if you if you got this little church, if people's got little churches like this in these days, need to be thankful for having a little church. Yeah, amen. amen. Instead of finding all the flaws and what we don't have and what we can't do, you need to be thankful you got a church in these last yeah. days that's standing upon the truth of God's word. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. it's rare. Yeah. And I've uh, I made up a bunch of little bags. Shinola's got like 20 of them back there. Shinola made up a bunch yeah, of them. Yeah, I was going to say, you better change it. It's got a, it's got a, biz, <laughs> or, or a business card that I made up for the church and these books and one of those charts. And then I made, we had this made. Uh, it's got a lot of good stuff on it, and uh, I made some up, Chanel made some up, and uh, if you want to take a handful of them and just pass them out to who, whoever, there's some good information in, in, these, in these bags, here, these little bags. All right, Romans chapter 8. I'm thankful for the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I mean, uh, I, know, I know all about Christmas. You know, our, our, our ancestors, our pagan ancestors, had a holiday they called Yule. Yeah. And Christmas has become Yule. Uh, you know, the Roman Catholics, they, they just, all, all the pagan holidays that we had, the Roman Catholics took them and turned them into Christian holidays. Now, you know, there's a strong insinuation that the Lord Jesus Christ was born in September, not December. Yeah. I mean... The, the month of September is the sign of Virgo, the Virgin. That's number one. Uh, amen. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, it's also the time of the Feast of Tabernacles. And Jesus Christ was God tabernacle, God dwelling in flesh. And uh, there's just a strong insinuation that he was born in September. That being said, this is the time of year that the world decides that they're going to celebrate the incarnation of Christ. And I like what Sam Gibbs said. Christians spend their whole life telling people to get their eyes on Christ, and then the two days of the year that they finally do, Easter and Christmas, we tell them wrong day. So I don't make a big deal about it. You know, Paul said, as you have opportunity, let us do good unto all men. We're free. We're not bound by days, but there's nothing wrong with using your liberty as an occasion to serve others. Yeah, yeah. Amen. And so that being said... The incarnation of Christ is something important, and 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 but the average person today don't know why Jesus Christ even came into this world. Yeah, Amen. And it's still a great mystery to most people. They follow his teachings. You know, they go about a sermon on the mount. They, you know, all this stuff that Christ did in his earthly life. But Paul said, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. Right. That was his purpose in coming into this world, was to save and reconcile mankind. And here in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, a very popular passage. Because Jesus Christ was born, Bill, and because Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins, because he was buried and because he rose from the dead and went back to the Father, mm -hmm. I now have a sure hope. Amen. Yeah. And it has nothing to do with anything that I've done. My hope is built, as the song said, on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. And the longer I'm saved, the more songs like uh, the old song, I'm longing for Jesus to, I'm longing for that glorious day when Jesus Christ shall come. I long to see his blessed face. And I, listen, man, some of you, some people out there, man, that Christ don't mean anything to and they don't get excited about this stuff, don't get next to me when we get there. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you right now, man, I'm, I'm get, I get excited about seeing that man see. And I'm getting excited about yeah. seeing that man see him. And, and I, I mean, I'm getting, I get excited about my dad seeing him. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. I'm getting excited about what's going to happen when we come face to face yeah. with the man who loved us and gave himself for us. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. mean, if that don't mean nothing to you now, I don't get next to me when we get there. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I'm thankful for the man Jesus Christ. Yeah, amen. The great mystery of this thing is that, listen man, God loved this man more than any man that ever walked this earth. Yeah. Abraham, God loved Abraham and he loved Isaac and he loved Jacob. 
David was a man after his own heart. The Bible said Daniel was a man greatly beloved. Yeah. Of them that are born of women, there's not risen a greater than John. Yeah. But not a one of them come a close second to the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Christ said, Thou lovest me before the foundation of the world, John 17. <laughs> and the great mystery is that God took that, that, that great, his, his great, the thing he loved most in this world mm -hmm. and gave it to sinful man. Wow. Yeah. What a thing. I can't, I mean, what a mystery. And now here in Romans chapter, I, I said all that to get you to this. I want to look this morning at the sureness of our hope. The, the sure hope that we have in the calling and purpose of God. And what Paul's talking about here in Romans 8, 28 through 38. Paul says down in verse 38, for I am persuaded. Yeah. Now this persuasion that Paul had, this sureness Paul had, Abraham had that full <laughs> persuasion. God promised him a son at 99 years old, Gary. Yeah. And he promised that it was going to come through Sarah, who is now 90 and barren and her womb now dead. Mm. And Abraham didn't say, Lord, what are you talking about? <clears throat> no, Abraham believed God. Yeah, that's right. Abraham was fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was able also to perform. Yes, sir. Abraham's persuasion came only after he knew the promise of God and God's ability to perform what he had promised. Amen? Yeah. If you're going to come to this full persuasion that Paul has here in Romans chapter 8, you're going to have to know what God has promised and then put your faith in his ability to keep it. Yeah. Because everything you see down here in this life is going to contradict what he's promised you. How many of you feel like you are a perfect, righteous being this morning? That's what God says you are. Amen. When he called, when he appeared to Abraham and told him he was going to give him a son out of Isaac, you know what he said? Thou shalt no more be called Abraham, but Abraham, for I have made thee a father of many nations. He's childless, but God changes his name right then and there because God knew what he was going to do. Yeah. And that's why Paul said he calls those things that are not as though they are. <laughs> Abraham didn't even have a child yet God saying you're the father of many nations I've done it, I've made you a father of many nations right. yeah. God calls us and, and, and listen, so Paul here in Romans chapter 8 I'm not going to spend a lot of time with the context but in verse 28 Paul says we know that all things work together for good to them that love God mm -hmm. what a hope what a hope it's going to be okay, folks. For each and every one of us that have believed the gospel of Christ, it's all going to be okay. Yeah. You know why? Because of God's purpose for us and what He has done. Now, it may not look like it down here. That's right. You've got to get the context of what Paul's saying here. When Paul says all things work together for good, a lot of people read that to mean that all the bad things that happen to me down here is God doing something to get me to a better place in a couple weeks or well, I lost this job. It's all because God's going to open up a door to a better job. That's how people read the passage. And this ain't what Paul's talking about because you can't apply that to a bunch of Christians in North Korea who's over there watching their kids dig around in the trash for a banana. Yeah, you're right. Christians in America are spoiled, man. Amen. Well, I lost this job, and God's going to open up the door to a better one. You got Christians over there in the Sudan, Christian women walking around with babies, and have Muslims come up and bash their face in with an AK-47, and as they fall to the ground, they pick the thing up and shoot the baby right in front of the mother. And the mother laying around, laying there on the ground, blood coming out of her face, crying the blood of Christ, the blood of Christ. American Christians couldn't tolerate that stuff. No You're right. Seen videos, I've seen pictures and videos of Ethiopian Christians laying down in a field, 200 of them burnt to a crisp by Muslims. You tell me, 
You tell me that Americans know how to apply Romans 8, 28, that all things work together for good. They don't have a clue. They take that verse to mean that God's going to work everything out in this life for me. He's going to make sure that everything works together so that I lay on a bed of roses and it's all soft and comfortable and pretty. That's not what the verse said. Because when you get the context, come back to Romans 8, 18. The context is Paul is comparing the present sufferings to the eternal glory that's mm -hmm. going to be revealed. Right. Yeah. That's the context. The context is not about, God doesn't promise you anything about present comfort and everything working out in this yeah. life. He doesn't promise that. Right. Yeah. Amen. What he's promised you is I'm doing something. I've called you to my, my eternal purpose. And in the ages to come, I'm going to do it. Amen. But right now ain't the time. Yeah, yeah you're right. Paul says, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time mm -hmm. are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Amen. You see that? The comparison is Paul is comparing the present suffering to the eternal glory that's coming. And when he thinks about it, he comes to this conclusion. It's not worthy to be mentioned in the same breath as what God's going to do yeah. for us. Yeah. Yeah. And what right. God has promised us and is going to do. Now look at what he says. So, so that's, the, that's the, the, the comparison and the contrast. And when you read down through here, uh, 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 he's not talking about things working out in this life. Working, working together for a promotion. You know, that's the kind of junk Joel Osteen spews out of his mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if that offends you, I'm sorry. The man is, he, that man's preaching, he is a seducing spirit speaking the doctrines of devils and speaking lies and hypocrisy. You're right. You're right. He is a seducer. The mm -hmm. power of I am. You know what that sounds like to me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sounds like the devil. Yeah, yeah. yeah. God, you know, oh, oh, I'm going to get that promotion. Bump your neighbor on the shoulder and say you're going to get, you're going to get rich, and God's going to work out your finances and all this stuff. You know what Paul would say to that? He would say, "What about me? I'm his apostle. What did he set me last? Yeah. I'm naked, buffeted, have no certain dwelling place. Yeah. What did God make us? He said, I'm, He said, I'm a spectacle unto the world and unto angels." Yeah. I'm a fool for Christ. Yeah. <laughs> when you look at the way Paul describes this present time, look at, look at how, look at the words he uses. In verse 20, he talks about how the whole creation is made subject to vanity. The whole creation right now is in a state of vanity. You understand that? And in verse 21, he says, the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption. The two, two things Paul uses to describe this present time is vanity and corruption. Look at what he says in verse 22. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. Mm, yeah. you, can't, you, you can't expect anything more. The life you now live right now, the only way it has any meaning is in Christ. Your labor in Him is not in vain. But Paul, Paul's saying this present time is a time of vanity, corruption. It is a time of travailing and pain and groaning. Look at what he says in verse 23. And not only they, not only is the creation groaning and travailing, but ourselves also. Mm -hmm. People that are saved are groaning right now. Why? Why? He says, ourselves also which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, mm -hmm. waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. Mm -hmm. Now get this, for we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? So, so it's, it's not about what you see down here, folks. It's not about God working out the circumstances of your life here. Paul said what God has given us is not seen right now. Yeah. We are groaning in this present condition, 
waiting for what the adoption has given us. God has adopted us, Bill. We have the spirit of adoption. We are sealed in Christ unto the day of redemption. Amen. But what we are now Amen. hoping for and waiting for is the day in which God is going to bring about the redemption of this body. Amen. And until that time, you are going to groan and travail and suffer and be Amen. in pain until that day. Amen. Yeah. Paul says our hope is not seen. You can sit down here and wait and, and beg and plead and all this stuff. What you need to be looking for is the blessing of hope. Amen. Yeah. That's when it's all going to be fixed. Is when we come face to face with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Verse 25, Paul said it, but if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. And so... Paul now in verse 26 says this. I'm all bleeding all the way up to verse 28. In verse 26, Paul says, Likewise, the Spirit also. Now, what's strange about our dispensation? I was talking with Shinola about this a little bit last night. What's strange about the dispensation you live in, Christ taught his disciples how to pray. That <clears throat> pray in this manner. Our Father was our man. Well, you can't pray that as a Christian today. Yeah. The kingdom ain't come. You're not living in a time in which the kingdom is at hand. Mm -hmm. Amen. You can't pray the way Christ taught his disciples to pray. That's right. But look at what Paul says about our dispensation. The body of Christ is such a is such a new creature of God. And and, and we we most Christians lack fundamental understanding of the body of Christ and who they are in Christ. What well, most Christians are, are they're, 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 they, they've got the first fruits of the Spirit, they're, they're saved, they're in Christ, and now they're in Christ and what they have is Paul said, if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin and the Spirit is life because of righteousness. And most Christians are, are, are submitted to the flesh. The flesh runs their life and all these things. They never see who they are in Christ. They're governed by religion and legalism and all those things. They, they truly don't understand the liberty that's in Christ. Yeah. But because of this, Paul says, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Mm -hmm. That's what you have right now. Infirmities. Yes, sir. You see, if people read a Bible, they wouldn't fall for the nonsense of men like Jesse Duplantis and Benny Hinn. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Right there's one verse. The Spirit helpeth our infirmities. You have infirmities. Amen. Yeah. Look at what he says next. For we know. This is where the Spirit steps in. Yeah. You know why? For we know not what we should pray for as we are. Most Christians don't even know how to pray. Amen. They don't know what to ask for. Amen. 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 You, you hear the average prayer today, and it's all focused upon the circumstances of this life, and Paul just laid the circumstances of this life out for you. Didn't he? Mm -hmm. And so we don't truly know what to pray for. Yeah, I mean, we can pray about sickness, but at the end of the day, sickness is a reality of, of our life right now. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. There's going to come a time in which you are not going to defeat. Mm -hmm. Poverty is a reality of this life. The more you try to live for God, the more poverty is going to come. Don't believe the nonsense. Paul said, I've labored with my hands that I may have to give to them that are in need. Yeah. Paul didn't labor for his own benefit. That's right. mm -hmm. He labored for the benefit of others. You know, he says over there in 2 Corinthians, he's talking about the ministers of Christ. And he says, here's how we approve ourselves as the ministers of Christ. One of the things he says, he says, as possessing nothing and yet making many rich. <laughs> Paul said, he said, we, we as the ministers of Christ, when the world sees us, they see us as being poor and having nothing and yet we're making many rich. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. As sorrowful and yet always rejoicing. Amen. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but poverty is a reality of this life. And, 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 so, and so Christians don't ever focus on, on, on when you read the way Paul prayed in his epistles, it's so different from the way people pray today. 
Amen. Paul was always focused in on the, but, but God has given us the spirit and the spirit itself maketh intercession for us. Yeah. Amen. While we are in this present time of groaning and, and three things are groaning in this chapter, creation, yourself, and the spirit of God is interceding with groanings which cannot be uttered. Amen. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit. Why? Because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Amen. So in this present time, the Spirit of God has been sent to help your infirmities Amen. by interceding on your behalf. And God knows his mind. When the Spirit of God groans, the, the, God the Father knows and understands those groanings because the Spirit of God is interceding for us according to God's will. Amen. But here at the end of the day, Verse 28 picks up the real business now. No matter what, Paul says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. Yeah. You listen to me. If you ever want to be fully persuaded as Paul was, you're going to have to understand what that verse means when he says we know that all things work together for good. Those all things working together for your good goes beyond the details of your life. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And I'm not saying that God's not involved in our life, mm -hmm. but like, like I've already told you, you, you get a proper perspective of these things. Do you think God don't love Christians in North Korea? Yeah. Sure. You think he don't love Christians in the Sudan and Lebanon? I mean, my goodness, man, atheists, people are people, people like, oh, you know, I lost this job, so God give me something better. There are atheists in Europe that can lose a job today and go find a better one tomorrow. Sure. That has nothing to do with God. That's right. That's right. That's yeah. right. You've got atheists, you've got, you've got Christians all over America living the good life that's got, got a full King James Bible sitting in their home and won't read it. You've got Christians in Ethiopia that will go and get into a casket with a dead corpse to get smuggled out of the country to go get two pages of a Bible and bring it back into Ethiopia. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that something? Yeah. You think God don't love them men? Oh, my. You see, people's understanding of these things are wrong. And if you don't understand what Paul means when he says we know that all things work together for good, if you think that's about the details of your life and God giving you a, a better life, that is bad thinking. That's corrupt thinking. Why? What happens when verse 35 comes? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, sword. If you think that Paul's saying all things, God's working all the details of your life to give you these very, this very good life. If that's how you read the verse, then what is, what's going to happen to you when the tribulation and the distress and the persecution and all those things come? There you go, preacher. There you go. Yeah. Your hope's got to be built on something else. And Paul had come to the conclusion, hey man, I'm persuaded. He said in all these things, in hunger, persecution, in jail, whatever it may be, Paul said we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Why? Verse 38, for I am persuaded. You see that? Paul had become persuaded that no matter what happened, nothing could separate him from God's love in Christ and God's purpose for him in Christ. It was going to happen. Amen. Amen? Yeah. That's our hope. And this persuasion and this surety comes once you know God's promise and believe his ability to perform what he promised. I like what Paul said in 1 Thessalonians. God is faithful. Who calleth you. Faithful is he that calleth you. Who also will do it. He called. When did he call you? He called you by the gospel. Yeah. And the way God calls men today. Is by the gospel. And what God is doing. Is he's using the gospel today. To sanctify and set men apart. For his purpose in Christ. Your response to the gospel. We're not talking about people's like, oh, I'm going to, they just wake up on the night and say, I'm going to get to church, start doing better. I'm going to yeah. turn over a new leaf. I'm going to get baptized. I'm going to do all this religious stuff. Yeah. 
What separates men unto this eternal purpose of God is the gospel and how a man reacts to that gospel. If he believes that gospel, he's been called into the eternal purpose of God. If he rejects that gospel, you can forget it. And so, and so God has called us. Notice what Paul says here now. He says, all things work together. That is not God making sure that you have it made in this life. When, and I, listen, it's better than what you think. He was like, I'm disappointed to hear that, that all the details of my life ain't going to work out. It's better than what you think. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Read Ephesians chapter 1. Mm -hmm. Read it. Ephesians 1, 1, 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Why, Paul? Because he hath blessed us. Yeah. Amen. And you, you American Christians, you got a double portion. You got six months of groceries in your home, heat, hot water, clothing, cars. All, I mean, you've got a double portion, man. That's right. mm -hmm. Amen. And it goes, but, but, but most Christians are so blinded by the carnal material blessings, they can't see the great spiritual blessings that God has blessed them with in Christ. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. But God hath blessed us, Bill, not will bless us. It's not conditional like Israel back here. I'll bless you. If, if you walk with me, I'll bless you. If you walk contrary to me, I'll curse you. God hath blessed us. Amen. With all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, watch this, according. Well, I'm going to show you how long God's been working for you. We're not talking about he started yesterday. And then you lost your job, and he's like, well, how, how let me, let me do this. God's been working for you since before Genesis 1-1. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. That we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us to the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Yeah. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in wisdom and all prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we've obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him, here it is, who worketh all things. After the counsel of his own will. God never got advice from anybody. Amen. And he don't need your advice today. <laughs> yeah. He knows what he's doing. Amen. Amen. He's been working things out. God all the way back before the foundation of the world. Said Bill Keener is going to be in my son. And Gary Sedera is going to be in my son. Amen. And Paul Lucas is going to be in my son. And Kenny Himes is going to be in my son. You see he didn't choose us individually. Don't think of Calvinism. Calvinism is a corrupt doctrine. It's vain imagination. Yeah. There's no such thing as unconditional election. Yeah. God didn't choose Paul Lucas because he liked Paul Lucas more than all men. Right, right. Right. He chose us in Christ. There's the condition. Amen. Yeah. You got If you get in Christ in time, God foreknew it and chose you in Him before the foundation of the world. Yeah. Amen. You get in Christ, God's already worked your destiny out. He's predestined. Amen. Paul says this. Notice this. Amen. Paul says, he says that, that, that all things work together for good to them that love God. We're not talking about people who love a religion. Yeah. Amen. I mean, the love of God is manifest. You, 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 know, you, you want to know a man that loves God? We'll go, we'll go to Jesus Christ on this earth. You know what he said? He said, if a man love me, he will keep my word. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might, with all thy strength. What dominates your mind? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Amen? Yeah. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God. <coughs> but Paul, well, listen, we're not talking about people loving a religion or a denomination or some figment of their <coughs> imagination that they call God. Well, I'm talking about...
man, when I say I love God, I love God that was manifest in the flesh, Bill. Yeah. I love God that, that loved me enough. God, the God that commended his love toward me and that while I was yet a sinner, Christ died for me. Yeah. I love the God that, has, that, that quickened me with Christ, raised me up with him, and seated me in heavenly places in his son. Yes. I love the God who blessed me with all spiritual blessings. I love the God who promised me that one day his son's going to come and call me out of this world yes. and call me up to meet him in the air, in the clouds, face to face. Amen. I love that God. Amen. Yeah. I love the God that's revealed himself in his word, the creator of heaven and earth and all that he's planned for me from the foundation, before the foundation of the world. That's the God I love. <laughs> Paul said that God hath saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to His own purpose and grace. That's the God I love. I love the God that Paul said, after that the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy He saved us. Yeah, yeah. I'm not talking about some God of the Roman Catholic. I'm not even talking about a God of the Baptist. Yeah. I'm talking about the God of this book, man. Yes, sir. I love that God. Yeah. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 2 9, get this now. 1 Corinthians 2 9, as it is written, I have not seen, yeah. nor ear heard, Amen. neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Mm. But I know this, all things work together for good to them that love him. Yeah. God has prepared things for us that love him. And I have not seen or ear heard neither been to the heart of man. You know what that means? These things are not a part of human vocabulary. <laughs> That's why Paul said we don't speak the wisdom of the world. Yeah. We speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. He said, God hath revealed these things unto us by his spirit. He said, which things also we speak not in words which man's wisdom teacheth. The average preacher around, running around the world today is not doing nothing more than spilling out the wisdom of this world. But getting everybody's hope focused on this life. Yeah, yeah. Your best life now. Yeah, yeah. Finances and being blessed and health and everything that man is going to lose. When, when, when you, you get up and all you preach is God wants you to be healthy, you're going to lose that health. Amen. Amen. God wants you to be wealthy. Paul said we brought nothing into the world that's certain we can carry nothing out. Yep. And they get you focused on all this stuff down here that God ain't worried about. God has prepared eternal things for us, Bill. Yeah, amen. And right now, the present time, the present sufferings ain't worthy to be compared with what He's prepared for them that love Him and are in Christ. Amen, preacher. Amen. Family <laughs> love God. And are the call. Get this. The call according to His purpose. Paul said in 2 Thessalonians, he's talking about, when Paul writes 2 Thessalonians, he's talking about everything out here that God has prepared upon this Christ-rejecting world. Yeah. You know what he says? He says over there that Satan is going to be manifest in the flesh one day. Mm -hmm. You know how he comes? He comes with all power and signs and lying mm -hmm. wonders. Yes. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who, receive, who, who believe not the truth but have pleasure in unrighteousness. Listen, but. Paul said we are bound to give God thanks always for you, brethren. Yeah. Why? Because God hath from the beginning. Yeah chosen you to salvation. Right there. God's not appointed us this day of wrath and that day of strong delusion right. that, that he can damn us all. And God chose you to salvation. <laughs> How? Through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah what God called me to to get his glory Amen. Mm -hmm. the more I didn't know it Bill but 
But the day that I heard he died for my sins and was buried and rose again and God saved me that day, I had no idea the great things that he had prepared and called Amen. me to. All I knew is I was a sinner going to hell and I didn't want to go. Yeah. And boy, he went above and beyond, Gary. Yes, he ripped yeah. me out of hell. He took me from hell down here in the lowest parts of his creation and seated me in heavenly places in his son <laughs> and said, one day I'm going to give you his glory. Amen. Amen. Yeah, boy. <laughs> what a savior. Yeah. Yeah. The world knows nothing about it. They're going to put the little baby in the manger and decorate their yards and they know nothing about this man. Yeah, yeah. they don't care. It's a yeah. shame. Yeah. It's a shame. God chose me to salvation. What set me apart, get this now, he chose me to salvation through sanctification. That means through setting us apart. And the way he set us apart was through the spirit and belief of the truth. The moment you heard the gospel and believed that the spirit of God came into you, baptized you into the body of Christ and sealed you there and set you apart. Not for this. He set you apart to a great hidden mystery and purpose that God had before the foundation of the world. Wow. Wow. Paul said it's all working together. Where were you at when God purposed it? Where were you at when he was working this out in his own mind? Where were you at when the Son of God died, was buried and rose again? Yeah. You weren't even born. And God was doing all this. Amen. Mm. And Paul said, look, man, yeah, the present sufferings, they're horrible. But they ain't worthy to be compared. <laughs> What's going on right now in your life right here, Ain't worthy to be compared with what God's prepared for you out there. Oh my. Amen. It's not worthy. <laughs> Look at what he says. Here's God's purpose. I'll be winding down here and say, I got to get through this, this next verse. <laughs> Paul says here, verse 29 and 30 tells us how we know that all things work together for good. Why? Verse 29, for whom he did foreknow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're not talking about the vain imaginations of John Calvin and five-point Calvinists and their false doctrine of unconditional election. Yeah. As I already said, Ephesians 1.4 says, God chose us in Christ. There's a condition on election. Mm -hmm. Paul didn't, God didn't choose Paul Lucas or Bill Keener or Gary Sedare or Kenny Imes or Mikey Carpenter. He chose us in Christ. Now, how did you get into Christ? Listen, man, every plan and purpose of God and every blessing of God is in His Son. If you want to know the love of Christ, look at verse 39. Where's the love of Christ at, or the love of God at? It's in Christ Jesus our Lord. You can't know the love of God outside of Christ. You can't do it. The love of God is found in His Son. When you get in His Son, you become a member of His body and all of the love that God had for His Son, He now has for you being bone of His bone and flesh of His flesh. Amen. You can't know that great love of God outside of Him. Yeah. Every fountain of blessing, all the riches of God's grace are in His Son. Amen. They're all in Christ. And any religion that don't center around Him, I don't trust it. Amen. Because the whole book centers around him. Yes, sir. He is the expectation of all creation, Bill. <laughs> and one day that man's going to be the theme of all music. Yeah. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. They're going to sing about him. He is worthy is what they're going to say. Yeah. What a Savior. <laughs> you miss it all if you're not in Christ. And at the end of the, at coming down to the, towards the end there of Ephesians, about the middle of Ephesians and verse 13, Paul is clear yes. on how you get in Christ. When that transaction takes place, Paul said, in whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth. Yeah. The gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you, you believed you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance. That's when the sanctification took place. Yeah. You believe the truth, the Spirit of God sanctified you by setting you into the body of Christ and sealing you there. Yeah. And when you got in Christ, it meant that God had now worked all things out according to His eternal plan and purpose for your glory and benefit. Amen. Ooh, praise the Lord. <laughs> Who 
whom he foreknew. Don't complicate it, man. <laughs> the gospel is God's calling. But he, the gospel separates men. Do you get that? Paul said the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us that are saved it is the power of God. So the world has two views of the cross. Sure. And if the preaching of the cross ain't the power of God to you, I'm not going to paint the church up and put on a carnal show so that I can get you in church. Yeah, that's what doing. Yep. Yep. If the cross ain't enough, all right, we'll have fun without you. We're having fun, ain't we, Bill? Amen. Mm -hmm. We don't, need, we don't need a big screen and a bunch of people up here dancing and putting on a show. I'm having a good time this morning. Just talking about him. But mate, listen, when you believe that gospel, did you hear it? Did you hear that Christ died for your sins? That he was buried and that he rose again from the dead? Did you believe it? Then guess what? You were foreknown. Foreknown to God. Called into this purpose of God. And whom he foreknew, look at what he says, man. I, I, bear with me a second. Look at what he says next. Whom he foreknew, he also did predestinate. God back here predestinated every man in Christ to three things. Number one, Ephesians 5, God predestinated us to the adoption of children. When I got in Christ, I become an adopted child of God. And because I'm a now an adopted child of God, God has predestinated me to something else. Paul said in Ephesians 1, 11, in whom also we've obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things at the counsel of his own will. Now let me show you this great mystery now. Paul said flesh and blood doth not inherit the kingdom of God. Right. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. You can't inherit the kingdom of God in your present condition. Amen. Right. Paul said, Behold, I show you a mystery. Not all shall sleep, but all shall be changed. So what are we waiting on? We're waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body so that when our bodies are redeemed, we go up and take up our inheritance that God has predestinated us to. Yeah. That's the order. Adoption, redemption, the inheritance, the glory. <laughs> Bill, I can't imagine what it's going to be like. Yeah. All I know, man, is it's going to be shouting ground for me. <laughs> Amen? Predestinated. Amen. What do you got to worry about? God predestinated you to become his adopted child, to give you an inheritance in eternity, and to give you the image of Christ. You don't have a thing to worry about this morning. <laughs> right. Man, we do got things to worry about. Lost loved ones and other things of that nature. But you ain't got nothing to worry about your eternal state. Right, right. Yeah. Look at what he says, and I'm done. Whom he foreknew, he predestinated. Whom he predestinated, verse 30. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. Mm -hmm. We've already seen this gospel. This call is by the gospel of Christ. When was it, Bill? 1983. What was it, May what? March 5th. March 5th, yep. 1983. God called Bill Keener by his gospel. Hallelujah. And because he foreknew Bill, we're not saying that he chose Bill Keener because he, he chose Bill Keener through belief of the truth. Right. And he foreknew Bill Keener. That's why Bill Keener to this day is one of the only men that ever survived what he went through in the coal mines in 1975. Mm -hmm. He was working for you then, Bill. Because he foreknew you all the way back there. Yeah. And he'd already predestinated Bill Keener in Christ. Because he knew Bill Keener would be in Christ. He predestinated Bill Keener to some things. And he wasn't about to let him die in 1975. Because he planned on calling him by the gospel hey, in 1983. Hey, hey. <laughs> hey man. Uh, glory to God. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly believe that, Bill. Hold up, it gets better. <laughs> he called us. Them whom he called, he also justified. Yeah. Freely. Freely. Mm -hmm. Justified us freely through, through the blood of Christ. Yeah. 
I like verse 33. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? <laughs> it is God that justifies. Go ahead, man. Find my flaws. I don't care. Listen, man. God justified me. I'll pick yours out. You pick mine out. It ain't going to mean anything at the end of the day. Right. He says, whom he called, damn, he also justified. And I love it. Whom he justified, damn, he also glorified. Mm. That word glorified, and I'm done. It means honored, dignified, exalted to glory. But notice it's in past tense. You notice that? God's already glorified us. Mm -hmm. Paul said, Paul said that Jesus Christ raised from the dead and ascended to the right hand of God far above all principality and power. And then in chapter 2 he says, And you yeah. hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ. Paul said, You were dead, and your life is hid with Christ and God. Mm -hmm. And when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. Amen. Man, listen, it's as good as done. That's right. Yeah. God has already glorified me. I'm not waiting for, for that glory or hope that I get it. Yeah. God's already done it. He done it the moment his son rose from the dead and ascended back to the right hand of the Father. That's when God glorified me. Yeah. You've got to understand your union to that man. Mm-hmm. Bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh, sharing in all that he is. Yeah, yeah. amen. <laughs> this thing right here, you ain't saving me. Yeah. This is my old man. This is the one that's perishing. The man, the man in me, that's the one that's being renewed day by day. Mm -hmm. Being strengthened and getting ever and ever closer to the image of Christ, Bill. I still got a ways to go, but I'm going to keep pressing forward. Yeah, but I know this, that no matter what happens, and I, I'd love to go through some more of these verses, but I say this, I mean, you get to the end of verse 30, and I love, Paul just starts asking a bunch of questions. What shall we say then? Well, you better hold out. Yeah. I mean, you, you, well, after what I just preached, can you imagine a preacher getting up behind the pulpit and saying, if you don't live it, you'll lose it. Yeah. And you better hold out, hold on, hold fast and endure after what I just read, what shall we say to these things? Then Paul said, if God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. He that spared not his own son, he gave you the thing he loved most before you were born. Yeah. What are you doing begging him for things today? Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. Amen. If he spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not also with him? Yeah. Freely, get the word, freely give us all things. Yeah, amen. What a God. Mm. What a Savior. Just stick your tongue out of the devil and then go, you know, if you don't like it, he can go suck an egg. <laughs> amen? Amen. Amen. Hey. I mean, I heard one preacher say one time, he said, I'm so saved I can swing out over hell over a wet spaghetti noodle and peek yeah. both the devil. Yeah. yeah. Not have to worry. Amen. Amen. Yeah. There's not a devil in hell big enough to do anything about what God has done for Amen. us. Don't let, don't let them get in your way and trouble your mind and trouble your heart and trouble your spirit. This is the reality. That yeah. God has worked out this thing for us and it's all going to be okay. Yeah. Amen. 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 I've got to say, I've got to save mom and dad. I don't have to worry about it. If they die before the Lord comes, I'll miss them. Yep. But I've got a hope. Yep. Hey Amen. I'm going to see them again one day. Right. My wife's saved. Don't have to worry about her death. My boys have all professed the Lord. Don't have to worry about that. My brother's saved. Yep. I thank God. Hey Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for another day.